So again, I'm only using a serial port on my system because I want to record on a single screen so you can see everything as I'm flipping back and forth between documentation. You should boot into your system under test, whether it's booting into Windows or Linux or an EFI shell on your own system, and then just use either an external monitor and keyboard or if it's a laptop, use the built-in. So on my system, the USB serial port shows up as COM5, so I connect to that via PuTTY. So I load the settings, COM5 at 11.52.00, open that up. Now it is connected, but the device is not powered. So I'm going to go ahead and power it on, and then you'll see that it will boot to a UEFI shell. And because I have that USB stick installed, I can go to that. And specifically, I'm going to go in and use Chipsec. I just had an old USB stick laying around that already has it on there, so I didn't bother to upgrade to the latest version. What Chipsec is going to allow us to do is first do some sanity checking to confirm information about the capability to dump Flash and what we see on Flash and so forth. And then we'll use information derived from Chipsec to find the specific memory mapped IO ranges for our particular system. So to do this, uh, you need a UEFI shell with the Python and Chipsec and all the prerequisites installed. Again, Architecture 4001 talks about other ways to poke the memory mapped IO, but we're going to do it this way for this class. So we use Python and then Chipsec util. And then you can always kind of just throw a help on the end of anything if you need help. So if we just run chipsec util help, it'll first give us sort of all of the available commands. So we've got ACPI commands, IO commands, IOMMU, memory, PCI, and so forth. So we're going to start with the spy capability, and we're just going to, you know, confirm that we can manually cause spy transactions with chipsec, and we can watch those transactions occur in the logic analyzer. So to do that, we do chipsec util spy and then help to find out what the command usage is. And so we could dump the entire flash chip with this command, but we want to instead just do a single read of a particular region uh, and see what sort of transaction gets created on the back end. So chipsec util behind the scenes is ultimately going to be causing memory mapped IO transactions. Uh, but let's just go ahead and run one of these commands and see what we get. So we're going to do spy read. The first thing is the flash address to read from, and the next thing is the length, and then we're going to need to output it to a file. So the flash address we want to read from, let's say that we want to read from offset 16. And so that is where we said is the magic flash descriptor uh, value that the PCH, that the Intel hardware expects to see if it's going to behave as a uh, descriptor mode, flash descriptor mode uh, system. So let's go ahead and read from that. And we expect to see that particular magic signature there. Let's read a total of four bytes and let's output it to a file we're just going to call test.bin. So we do that. Chipsec goes, we're then going to have to use the hex edit command to look at our file. So hex edit, test.bin. And indeed we see 5A, A5, F0, 0F. Great, so that confirms that we can successfully use Chipsec to read, but we really want to use, you know, memory mapped IO at the end of the day. So we'll get there, but first let's actually confirm that we can see in the logic analyzer that this read command is something that we can observe as just a singular read command. So to do that, we just go ahead and start our logic analyzer. Actually, let me change some configuration right now. So I'm gonna use the, the looping that we used before. So I'm going to start the logic analyzer. I'm gonna go back to chipsec, going to hit enter, gonna zoom out here in the logic analyzer. And there we see that, you know, some sort of transaction occurred. And I specifically added an analyzer to this. I added the QSPY analyzer because I basically want to, you know, see there's all these little blips, but the QSPY analyzer will only kind of show us something where there's a real and valid transaction. So that helps me, you know, narrow in on where exactly this is amongst all the other little blips here. And so indeed we can see that this is, if we zoom in all the way, this is a dual IO fast read command, BB, 
and then the address is going to be 10. So 10, this because it's a fast read, it's 10 in parallel here. And then there's dummy cycles and the actual data coming back. And that's exactly the data we expect, you know, from this. It's exactly this 5A, A5, F00, 0F that we expect to see. So cool. This confirms that using chipsec, we can cause a flash transaction and see it in the analyzer. So now I want to do one more test. I want to change that from reading 4 bytes to 16 bytes, and I want to change the way that we capture the data to a triggered capture instead of a looping track capture. So looping just kind of sits there and watches stuff forever. Triggered capture can be only triggering the capture after it sees something like a rising edge or a falling edge, etc. So because we know that this is a active low chip select thing, and it's always going to go low before these clock cycles start uh, yielding valid, uh, valid data, we can trigger based on chip select going low, and that'll make it so that it only captures the data after that, and we can set a capture duration can also trim the pre-trigger data. For some reason I don't think that actually works, but I'm going to set it anyways just to see what happens. So go ahead and do that. Go back to chipsec, change this to be a 16-byte read instead of a 4-byte read, cause the transaction to occur. Behind the scenes, boom, this successfully saw the capture and then it did successfully trim. So good, it was just my other system that that wasn't working on. So there we go, this just jumped directly to only the data we care about. This time you can see it's still address 10, but we actually only see four bytes of data here. So what gives? Well, if we go back and see what this is saying, it's saying that it's reading 16 bytes in four byte chunks. So that's completely unnecessary and wrong in some sense, but that just happens to be the way that uh, Chipsec does it. You notice that's not the way that it behaves when the system is actually booting. So let's go ahead and try a capture without the trigger, where we just go ahead and capture forever and see if we can see or four byte values being read instead. Great, zoom out. And there we go, we've got four four byte reads, although, you know, they really should have just done 16 byte read, but for whatever reason, this is done as four four byte reads. So those are the first four bytes. We can follow to the next trigger. And these are the next four bytes. 03, 00, 04, 00. So looking at that in the hex dump, 03, 00, 04, 00. So that's exactly the data we expect.